So today we would like to go through the D operator method in solution of particular integral of our second order linear differential equation. Now, if we let D to be D dx, D squared to be D squared, DX squared, D cubed to be D cubed, DX cubed, then we say this implies a dy is equal to dy dx. d squared y will be d squared y dx squared. d cubed y will be equal to d cubed y dx cubed. Now we want to note some few things here. If you get a situation where we have 1 over d as it multiplies a function of x, then just means that one means we integrate that function with respect to x. So it is the integral of f of x dx dx. Now, in any case you are dealing with, uh, for example, if the right hand side of our differential equation is a polynomial, and for a polynomial, we know very well we might be not be using any d operator theorem. So if we have some expression like 1 plus d raised to the power minus 1, then we have to take those d's to the numerator, meaning we expand 1 plus d raised to the power minus 1 uh, using binomial theorem. So as we use binomial theorem, you know, the, since the power here is a negative, we'll create a series involving D, which will be an infinite series. Eh? Now, in case something like this acts on a polynomial, there comes a time, depending on the degree of the polynomial, where D raised to power, some value will create a zero for the polynomial, and then it clears or it converges to what is required. In part three, we have one minus d raised to power minus one. If it is expanded using binomial expansion or binomial theorem, this is what we are getting. One plus d plus d squared plus d cubed plus others. Meaning it will be an infinite series. Now, for a polynomial, if it is raised to some power, depending on that degree, you'll find when this one is applied to that polynomial, that particular polynomial will have a result which is finite and it will converge. And therefore, that is what we are going to use. Such may not be applied to functions that does not clear up. For example, we cannot use the same expansion for an exponential. We cannot use this function, the, this expression, or this expansion using even trigonometric terms. Because as you differentiate a sign, you differentiate a cos, there is no time, even if you differentiate it one million times, there is no time it will go, it will go to a zero. So, when we meet exponential, when we meet trigonometric terms, then we are going to use some theorems which are known as D operator theorems in application or in solution of such. But when we are having polynomials, pure polynomials on the right hand side of the differential equation, our particular integral can be determined using this particular knowledge that we have here by doing expansion using binomial theorem. Now, before we go to some examples, we need now to note down what the required or the most commonly used D operator theorems. So we have D operator theorem. So theorem one. T 
theorem one, we have function of D acting on exponential AX, where A here is a constant. Then the answer will be equal to A power AX multiplying F of A. Where there was now D, we insert A in its place. So it is that exponential multiplying, that function of D where there was D, now we insert A. Then we get our result. Theorem 2. Function of D acting on E power AX, multiplying another polynomial, which is a function of X, or just a function of X in general, this will be equal to the exponential exponential ax will pass that function of d. And where there was d, now we leave behind a function. We leave behind a function. Where there was d, we now put d plus a. And now we let this one act on the function concerned. That function multiplying the exponential, whether it is trigonometric, whether it is hyperbolic, whether it is a polynomial, then the exponential is passing, but where there was D, now we insert D plus A to multiply that function of X. Theorem three, function of D, acting, AX stroke sign AX. This will be equal to this is function of D squared, function of D squared, function of D squared. That is function of D squared because AX and AX will be equal to F of negative a squared. Now acting on cos ax, stroke sign ax. The meaning of this, this is a function of d squared. So where there was a d squared in that expression, on that particular function, we take a which is a constant, we square it, after squaring the A is when we give it a negative sign. When we give it a negative sign, we now substitute where there was D squared. And when we substitute, we let that one act on the same cos AX or sign AX as it was indicated in that particular expression. We go to theorem 4. f of d squared acting on cos ax, stroke chance ax. This will be equal to sans ax. This will be equal to f of a squared, now multiplying cos ax. Stroke chance AX. Stroke chance AX. So those are the D operator theorems that we are going to use. Normally, when theorem one fails, always we check if theorem two can now work. If theorem one fails, then theorem two must work. work. Now, always, if it is something involving an exponential, that is when theorem 1 fails, you use theorem what? 2. Or, if it is exponential multiplying another function, then we use theorem, four, uh, theorem 2. If an exponential is multiplying another function, and the function of D is acting on it, then we use theorem 2. Theorem 3 is strictly for P1 trigonometric function. Theorem 4 
is used for P1 hyperbolic functions. So we go for example one. So example one. Use the operator method. To solve the D So in our solution for this, we are solving this particular, we have to use the operator method to solve this particular DE, given that when x is 0, y is equal to 3, and dy dx is equal to 1. So in our solution, we say y will be equal to yc plus yp. This implies 1. This implies our d squared minus 2d plus 2. This one into yc is equal to zero. So if that one is equal to zero, we prepare here auxiliary quadratic equation. So m squared minus 2m plus 2 is equal to zero. If we solve this, we get m will be equal to 2 plus or minus root of 4 minus 4 times a1 times c2 all over times c2 all over 2a 2 times 1 which gives us 2 plus or minus 1j not giving us that it is giving us 1 plus or minus 1j, plus or minus 1j. So this resembles what? Alpha plus or minus beta j. So it seems our alpha is equal to 1. Our beta is also equal to 1. So if that is the scenario, if that is the scenario, we say now, our yc is equal to a power x into a cos x plus b sin x. b sin x. That is our yc. But we know something. But d squared minus 2d plus 2 into yp. This is the one which generates 5x cubed. 5x cubed. This implies what? Our yp will be equal to 1 all over d squared minus 2d plus 2. The whole of this multiplying 5x cubed. Now, here, any constant is always allowed. Any constant, this, this is 5x cubed. Any constant is normally allowed to pass any operator. So this 5, we can take it this way. So it will be 5 into 1 all over 
we can rewrite this as 2 minus 2d plus d squared. The whole of this now multiplying x cubed, cubed. We are just rewriting it. But since our d's are in the denominator, we can take them up by having, using binomial theorem, by putting something raised to power minus 1. So before we do that, in any binomial theorem expansion, it must be 1 plus something or 1 minus something. So 1 minus, there are two terms, but the first one must be 1 plus some other thing or 1 minus some other thing, then raised to power minus 1. So where there is these two, we would like to create a 1 there by doing some sort of factorization. So this will be 5. We take these two out so that we can have one there. So we'll be having what? One all over one minus. We can have a minus, but we want to create minus something. So here uh, we have what? 2D. So minus 2D. Here we need a plus, and there is a minus already out. So here we will have minus d squared. But because 2, we have taken it out, we need to divide by what? By 2. So that when we open our bracket, this 2 will cancel that. When you multiply out 2 times 2, you will get your 2. 2 times this will cancel this 2. And when we open our bracket, we are back to where we came from. So the whole of this acting on x cubed which will be equal to 5 all over 2 into 1 minus now 2d minus d squared eh, or, uh, all over 2. The whole of this raised to power minus 1. Now multiplying x cubed, x cubed. which will be equal to 5 all over 2. We can now expand this. Uh, let us put a bracket here so that it is in. We can now 1 minus, I'm going to call this here something, eh? 1 minus something here. So if it is in that format raised to power minus 1, it takes now, it resembles now the expression 1 minus d raised to power minus 1. So in our expansion, it will be 1 plus that something, plus that something squared, plus that something cubed as we proceed, since it is 1 minus something. Eh? So it will be 1 plus that something, which is 2d minus d squared, all over 2 uh -huh. plus that something, which is 2D. Let's put a bracket. 2D minus D squared all over 2. Then we square. Plus that something, when it is cubed. And we are going up to the cubed because we are having a degree 3. So when you have a degree 3, then you can only move up to somewhere you have a power 3. The power force, all of them, when you differentiate x cubed four times, you get a zero. So they will not actually bring something tangible. So it is 2d minus d squared all over 2 raised to power 3 plus others. We emphasize that we are not going to expand the whole of it, but there are some others. Since we know others will just bring a zero, According to the function, our function of d is going to act on. So this is now x cubed. So this will be equal to 5 all over 2 into. Uh, let's expand whatever is here. This is 1 plus now 2d divided by 2 is a d. Minus d squared but divided by 2. 
this one will become, so now when we square this, we get, we'll be having 4D squared. 4D squared divided by 2. So we can just say, let's expand, we can, we can still have that too. 4D squared minus 4D cubed minus 4D cubed, and that is minus, then plus D power 4. We have expanded this, then put all over 4. Put all over 4. 2 squared is 4. So there we are. Plus, when you cube this, we get 8 d cubed, 8d cubed, plus others which will have higher powers that we don't need. We'll have power 4, and power 4, when it acts on this, you get a 0. So we can say plus others here, uh, but this one is all over 8. 2 cubed is 8. So the whole of this, we say plus others. Now acting on x what? x cubed, plus others acting on x cubed, which will be equal to 5 all over 2 and 1. Let's remove inner brackets, plus d, minus d squared all over 2, plus 4d squared divided by 4, we just get d squared. 4d cubed divided by 4, we just get minus d cubed. Then plus d power 4 all over 4. Then plus 8d cubed all over 8. We get d cubed. We get d cubed. We get d cubed and that's all. Plus others. plus others, the whole of this acting on x cubed, cubed. So this will be equal to 5 all over 2 into, let's start the operation, 1 times x cubed, it is just x cubed. 1 times x cubed, it is just x cubed. D times x cubed. D meaning differentiate this function once with respect to x. So which will give us 3x squared. Here we are supposed to differentiate this one twice. So we, we get now minus, when you differentiate x cubed twice, you get 6x. But this 6x is all over what? 2. When you differentiate twice here, we also get 6x. Mm -hmm. This one and this one will cancel because it is minus d cubed plus d cubed. It will cancel. Then d power 4, when it acts on this, we get a 0. So that is the end. That is the end, which gives us now 5 all over 2 into, into now x cubed plus 3x squared. This is minus 3x plus 6x, X, we get plus 3x. So this is now our yp. So our yp is now ready. So we can say our y, the general solution, our y will be equal to yc plus yp, which will be equal to what? We have five, yc was a power x, a cos x, plus b sin x,
plus 5 all over 2 into x cubed plus 3x squared plus 3x. Plus 3x. So that becomes our uh, general solution. From there, we can go for particular solution. Particular solution. Now, particular solution is when we consider the conditions that were given. And in our conditions that were given, in our conditions that were given, there was an expression. There is something being equated to dy dx. So that means what? We have to go for dy dx. So dy dx is equals to what? If we have y being equal to this, dy dx, we keep this constant and differentiate what is here. So it is e power x into minus a sine x plus b cos x plus we are now keeping what is inside this bracket constant, differentiating exponential x. We get the same exponential x into a cos x plus b sine x. Plus 5 over 2. We now differentiate. We now differentiate x cubed. When we differentiate x cubed, we get 3x squared. We differentiate 3x squared, we get 6x. We differentiate 3x, we get 3. So after having the expression for dy dx, and we also have expression for y, we can proceed now and put in our conditions so that we get the values of the arbitrary constants A and B. So we say when X is equal to zero, Y is equal to three. When X is equal to zero, Y is equal to three. So we say three is equal to, X is now zero, zero. We simply get A from there, only A. Sign zero is zero. Because well, 0 is 1, e power 0 is also 1. Uh, and that's all. Because x is now 0 here everywhere. x is now 0. So if x is 0, we say 3 is equal to a. When x is equal to 0, dy dx is equal to 1. dy dx is equal to 1. This implies what? This implies 1 is equal to, we go here, we simply get AB. 1, 1 times B, 1. Here we get plus A. So that one goes to 0, plus A, yes. And here we get plus. 5 over 2, when x is 0, 0, so 3 times 5, 15, 15 all over 2. So this implies what? A plus B. A plus B will be equal to 1 minus 15 all over 2, which is equal to minus 13 all over 2. Minus 13 all over 2. That is A plus B. So B only will be equal to minus 13 all over 2 minus A, which will be equal to or A is 3. That is minus 19 all over 2. So minus 19 all over 2. From there now we can write the particular solution. We can now write the particular solution. So particular solution, 
particular solution, y will be equal to, y will be equal to e power x, e power x, we can say all over two into a, a should be three, so here it will be six cos x. Uh -huh. Six divided by two, you get a three. Eh? Uh, B minus 19 sin x plus 5 over 2 into x cubed plus 3x squared plus 3x. And that is the solution to that differential equation. When worked, from the operator method. So solve the d, d squared x dt squared minus 2 dx dt is equal to 5t squared plus 3. So we are told to solve that. D, solve the d e this using the operator method. You see? Operator method. So as we can see here, x is a function of t. So we say in our solution, x will be equal to xc plus xp. This implies what? Our d squared minus our d squared minus 2d. Our d squared minus 2d into xc will be equal to 0. So auxiliary quadratic equation. m squared minus 2m will be equal to 0. m into m minus 2 should be equal to what? Zero. This implies one. M is equal to zero, or M is equal to two. Therefore, X C will be equal to A plus B exponential two T. A plus B exponential two T. But we know something d squared minus 2d. This one acting on xp it is the one to bring uh, 5t squared plus 3. 5t squared plus 3. This implies our xp will be equal to what? 1 all over d squared minus 2d. The whole of this acting on 5t squared plus 3 which is equal to this d here, we can do some factorization because we have a d here and a d here. We can split uh, the two function of d into two. So this one will be equal to one all over d multiplying another one all over d minus 2, multiplying d minus 2. The whole thing now acting on 5t squared plus 3, which now we can rewrite as 1 all over d. Now, because this d is down here, and it is with another constant, it is not just 1 over d like this. What we are going to do, where there is negative two, we'd like it to read one, so that we can apply binomial theorem. So we take that negative two out, we factorize, so we remain with what? Here we'll be having one. One multiplying negative two times one, you get your now negative two. Then here now, we need a minus, because this D should be applied. So 
minus d, but put all over what? 2. So that negative 2 times a negative, positive, this 2 will cancel that 2. So we remain with our plus. And this, when it multiplies this, we still have our negative 2. Eh? So the whole thing multiplying 5t squared plus 3. So this will be equal to this negative half can come forward. It passes all the operator because it is a constant. We have 1 all over d there, the following. And now we have 1 minus d all over 2. But raised to power minus 1. To act on 5t squared plus 3. Which will be equal to negative half a constant. 1 all over d. Now multiplying. We expand this. This will be 1. Since here is a minus, it will be plus d all over 2, plus that something, plus this something squared. When it is squared, it is now d squared all over 4. Plus that something cubed, it will be plus d cubed all over a, 8, plus others. And then we let this one act on what? 5t squared. So, we said this one is a constant. 1 over d. When we expand this, we get this. 1 plus d over 2, plus d squared over 4, plus d cubed over 8, plus others. Now, we say others because this is d cubed. When you have d power 4 applied to 5t squared, you will get a 0. Even the d cubed will even give a 0. But you are just writing it to show that actually from there onwards, we'll actually get a 0. So acting on 5t squared plus 3. This one will now be equal to a minus a half. 1 over d still remains. We start, uh, uh, we now multiply this bracket with this. 1 times this, we get 5t squared plus 3. A d times this, a d times this, when you differentiate 5t squared, eh, we get 10t. 10t divided by 2, we get 5t. We get 5t. Now, when you differentiate twice, when we differentiated once, we got 10t. We differentiate twice, we get 10. Now, 10 divided by 4 becomes 5 over 2. d cubed will get a 0. So, when we get a 0, even d power 4 will give a 0. Others will give a 0. So, this one will now be equal to Minus a half is there. Now multiplying. 1 all over d multiplying all of this. So let's just write it first. 1 over d. We simplify this expression. We have 5t squared plus 5t plus 5t mm, 3 plus 5 over 2. Two, this one gives us 11 all over 2. As we continue, as we continue, our XP will be equal to negative a half. 1 over d means we are integrating that expression. 5t squared plus 5t plus 11 all over 2. We are integrating the whole thing with respect to the polynomial concerned, with respect to t now, which will be equal to minus a half. When we integrate this, what do you get? 
we get 5 over 3 t cubed plus 5 over 2 t squared plus 11 all over 2 t. So our xp is equal to that. Therefore, the general solution where x will be equal to xc plus xt. X, xc plus xp. And our xc was a plus b e power 2t. b e power 2t. Now we can say minus a half. Minus a half into uh, 5t cubed all over 3. Plus 5 all over 2t squared plus 11 all over 2t. And that is now, because there were no conditions given, that is the end of that solution. But by use of the operator, operator.